Welcome to episode 138 of Let's Talk Geek, your weekly dose for everything geeky. In the show today, what if Star Wars 2 were actually good? Board games and YouTube's aggressive copyright policies at work in South Africa. Thanks for watching. In the show with me today, we have James Etherington Smith. Hello. Quentin Bronkhorst. Hi. <laughs> Luke Potgieter. <laughs> That's like a creepy stalker. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Behind the mixing desk, Johan Els. <laughs> and here, all the way back here, Woo-hoo! Jan Vermeulen. Um, I'm glad you got your name right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to start kick the show off with a bit of a random, and then, gentlemen, we'll do a proper introduction. But we have mm. to start the show with a random. It's tradition. First up, Sphenic numbers from ancient Greek, the wedge in Greek, is a positive integer that is the product of three distinct prime numbers. This is relevant because 138 is a Sphenic number, the sum of four consecutive primes, 29, 31, 37, 41, and the smallest product of three primes, such that in base 10, the third prime is a concatenation of the other two. So two times three times 23 is 138. I, I can't even visualize what's I don't even know what on. you said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you imagine, don't even know what so, you said. So saying. imagine the number two <coughs> multiplied by the number three, uh-huh. mm-hmm. then put two and three together, and you get 23. Then you multiply oh. by 23. So there 2 times 3 times 23 gives you 130. So the Greeks had a lot of spare time. <laughs> Jan, can um, we give you a whiteboard and you just, yeah, yeah, just draw it up? Explain, and, explain that to us. And what is this yeah. useful for? Sphenic numbers. Dude, what's it's, any math okay. useful for? It's hey, random. Whoa, 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 let's not get there, eh? <laughs> so so the, no, it's actually interesting. Um, uh, an anecdote we were told at university was that when the mathematician, uh, mathematicians who, who developed matrix algebra uh, came up with it. They were like, finally, we have developed a branch of mathematics that is absolutely useless. <laughs> and it turns out to be like incredibly useful. Without yeah. matrix algebra, we would not so have So one day, we that was like, may know what this is useful that, for. <laughs> absolutely useless maths. That was my perception of my entire high school career of maths, actually. <laughs> I, I mean, use I, trig I still, a lot still, so there's that. <laughs> you use what? Trig. trig. Oh, trigonometry. Yeah. yeah. Not, sign, not for us sign, cause, tan, co- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's sad. Well, yeah, I, I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna get into the nitty gritties of things, some you, you might have to get into the trick of things. Yeah, yeah. Well, Especially if you're talking yeah, yeah. about uh, Google Maps and Google okay. Earth and whatnot. Okay. Things get interesting. Yeah. With that, some mm. introductions, James. <laughs> what do you do? I'm the editor of mygaming.ca.za and we talk about all things gaming related all day long, which so is a lot of fun. So, might be an obvious question, but what manner of geek are you then? I don't know how to answer such a question. <laughs> I, I'm a gaming nerd, I suppose. Sweet. Yeah. Quinton? Hi, yes. yes what do I'm you here. do? Um, I'm, a, I'm a business and financial and tech journalist and on occasion gaming journalist, depending on wherever I'm needed. So, yeah, like pretty... And what manner there. of geek are you? Um... I'm just here for the free booze, really. Uh, I was, was pro- but I suppose yeah, I'm, I'm predominantly a, a gamer geek with uh, tabletop <clears throat> and just general interest, really. Okay, cool. Yeah. Johan, what manner of geek are you? Video and audio. Broadcasting, satellite, networks, that sort of stuff. Cool. So behind that mixing desk is a fantastic place for you. <clears throat> well, that's the thing. I haven't sat behind a desk for very long. <laughs> exactly. Very, so very long. So it's quite exciting tonight. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see if I get it right. <laughs> I just realized I don't have a lower third <laughs> my. for myself. Well, I mean, you're kind of off screen, so it's not that we big can a deal. see your hand. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, what manner of geek are you? I am first and foremost a gamer, but I'm also an every geek's geek, so I'm into everything. <laughs> Sweet. Geek's geek. A wow. Geek's geek. Yeah. A real geek's geek. Wow. <laughs> I write for mybroadband.co.za. Uh, You'll be asked, Jan. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's why I'm the showrunner. I just get to talk over you lot. <laughs> and I guess that makes me a telecommunications broadband and gadget geek. Kind of have to be uh, mm. to keep up with our audience. Uh, they do keep us on our toes, mm. uh, make sure we get it right. Otherwise, you are ridiculed. It's the only way to keep a journalist honest. Or we ignore you. <laughs> oh, n- no, <laughs> there's definitely the no ignoring <laughs> happening. Flame, flame you in the comments. The yeah, there yeah. Is, there is just, just no – ignoring is the one thing that does not happen, which is a, which is a good thing. All right, let's get into the quick geek. The rules are simple. Two minutes per topic maximum. The mixer keeps us in line. Uh, so I, I assume the mixer will just, uh, will just wing it tonight. 
Um, <laughs> and he's, he's got uh, wooden spoons to throw at us, should we go over time. Oh, uh, yeah. He who is most interesting wins. Gentlemen, start your engines. Topic number one, courtesy of Luke. Um, uh, there is a smartphone that has gone one better. LG has relaunched a smartphone with the highest resolution of any, well, has announced the smartphone yes. with the highest resolution of any smartphone ever, yes? So the image that we have is of a, like a dev board, but this is more of a rant than it is a covering of the story of like, who in their right minds needs to have a phone with a display of what, 2560 by 11, what's 1440? That's and what in how many inches? 5.5. 5.5 5. <clears throat> inches. Mm. Uh, I mean, if I take a screenshot on that device, I can't view it in its full glory on my big desktop. screen desktop yeah. monitor now. Now, who is this, who is this catering for? Who would need mm. a device? Uh, battery, size, gadget size screens. That's that now, what they even say in the article is that anything over 300 DPI or pixels per inch... Uh, yes, you won't even see Human it. eye can't perceive you, it. Really, you can't so, perceive it yeah. very well. So, uh, well, that's the basis of Apple's Retina display, which they get mocked for. But I mean, yeah, one one great. hopes that they've done the research, yeah, uh, and gone and found. You know, at this point, that's that's pretty much as dense as we need to go. Denser than that is really not necessary. Mm. So, uh, I'm not sure if, at all about what the phone can actually do. It's, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's an Android a massive phone. display. It'll but Android and have massive resolution. Well, and it, yeah, and so, a battery life of 20 seconds. <laughs> I'm sure. Talking and about a battery life of 20 malware. seconds, <laughs> I'm going to be horribly unprofessional and plug my laptop in while running a show. It's going to be great. Um, I'm going to move us along while we're doing that. What if you Star can have Wars? The first one. There you go. <laughs> what if Star Wars two, Episode two, <coughs> were actually good? And this is interesting. This is this is put together by a YouTuber, so it's uh, you don't have to read that much. You can just go and watch the guy's um, YouTube channel. Luke, you said that that you gave this guy a watch. I don't know if you've watched this particular I, episode. I actually subscribed to this guy based on his uh, "How could they make Star Wars Episode One better?" Um, so <laughs> they, they managed so, to. <laughs> so yeah. So what he's done is just a few years later, he's now continued his theme. So you'll see, you'll see that he actually references his previous videos. So you actually have to watch them in order because what he's done in the first video, uh, kind of continues into the next video yeah so, it's actually quite interesting but he, he, what he proposes sounds like a really rockin movie i mean <laughs> you you kind of wish like yes this is an excellent story okay and what does he propose i mean giving all right so it's basically a complete rewrite of episode two so episode <laughs> one so episode yeah. one he, he <laughs> made some minor changes uh, i don't know exactly what like he proposed. kill Bobo jinx <laughs> Jar Jar Binks. I oh. don't know. I th- it might be no Jar Jar Binks in episode one. Might might be one of the things. Um, you know, you can easily improve episode one. It just becomes about a twelve second clip. Intro credits. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and then just summarize what happened at the end. Uh, flying text. You know, just describe the movie script and the flying text at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, things happened. Done. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and so um, he made some changes to episode one, such as um, I think um, they. Scrapped Naboo. Instead of introducing a whole new planet, have it all happen in Alderaan, for example. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I get lobbed with things. All right, but what this raises to me as, a, as somebody who writes for a living, it's, it's actually something quite interesting in that. After the fact, it's very easy to improve a story. And so as an experiment, I would like to do this for Mass Effect because I've been thinking about this for some time. (laughs) 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 Quinton agrees with me. Um, But yeah, after the fact, it's very easy to see what was done the wrong. When all the Mm. things are introduced, you as the fan can put together your own stories quite easily. Coming up with the original idea, however... Um, it, it's, it's not always as easy as it looks. And, and as a creator, having your stuff critted in this way, can, I'm sure it stings. Mm. But, I mean, I, Lucas must be used to it by now. He has well, a what does he care? Base. He's got how many million, bajillion dollars now? <laughs> he probably bathes in money. Yes, so. exactly. Didn't he just marry, like, an 18-year-old or something? I don't know. Uh, that, that's largely irrelevant to me. I just care that Star Wars <laughs> and Indiana Jones sucked. It was very <laughs> sad. Anyway, um, this, this we, we've bombed in the courtesy of Quentin, um, just because it's such awesome headline material. <laughs> Leaving South Africa cost, cost Mark Shuttleworth more than leaving Earth. <laughs> and this, this was actually brought, uh, brought to our attention by Forbes. Uh, they did you know, some calculations. When Shuttleworth went to space, when was that, 2001, uh, it cost him $20 million of his own personal finances and stuff like that. When uh, he tried to move his immense wealth out of South Africa, all the, all the levies and taxes he had to pay on that, 
you know, worked out to be the equivalent of $30 million at the time. So, yeah, it cost him $10 million dollars more to leave South Africa than it cost him to go over well, to, to move his money out well, of South yeah. Africa yeah. well you know, so you're going to take your money with you it's yes so okay so um, and, and while it makes for a good headline and for an, in, an interesting article um, what I would what, to me the takeaway here is um, what's happening in export controls um, what's happening, um, you know, f- in, in terms of money moving in between countries? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Um, is it just a thing that people have to live with? Well, there was, it was actually kind of a, a big slap in the face for Shuttleworth because once he had moved the last bit of his money out of the country, they dropped the, they dropped the, the actual uh, laws or the actual things. So if he had waited maybe a year or two, you know, he wouldn't have had to have pay those fees. Um, but the recent court battle that he tried to, you know, sue Saab to get 200... Saab, yeah. No, it was Saab, South oh. African Reserve Bank. Yeah. He, he uh, tried to sue them to get 250 million rand back from them. Okay, the bid failed, but um, they, they did change a few of the, the, the laws and legislation. They were saying, okay, well, look, the president's got a little bit too much control here. So some good did come out of it. He, he didn't, you know... When when two hundred fifty million rand, but hey, uh, he's not not like exactly struggling for cash, is he? <laughs> Could have used that money to uh, finish up the edge, the, the Ubuntu edge. Oh, and, actually, that's yeah. a good point. And, and we haven't put that point. in the show Very notes. Nice. But following on from what from what we said last week, the Ubuntu edge did in fact not happen mm. exactly as predicted. Uh, very unfortunate. And two hundred fifty million rand could have certainly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got it along exactly. Yeah, well, got, got, I think that, that, that would have started that stuff. So. It, it would have, it would have definitely pushed it over. Um, then, uh, Luke, uh, you, I think, you brought this yeah. one. Wikipedia claims that it can predict <coughs> the box office flops. <coughs> this is intriguing. So much like they can predict whether a movie can do well or not on uh, <coughs> Twitter, uh, Wikipedia claims that it can as well. And how they do this is on the basis of a whole bunch of factors like how early someone makes an article for a movie and how many edits they've had and what's the quality of the edit. How quickly the deletionists come in and say, not relevant, delete speedy deletion off Wikipedia. The more, you know, the more happy the users are on the forum or whatever and the user pages and so forth, the more likely the movie is to do well. So it's about measuring buzz, really, and different different metrics for measuring buzz around a movie. Imagine if they had, like, come up with this before Star Wars Episode 1 and 2 were made. (laughs) Well, that's... That's the thing. Like, the the quality of the movie has almost no bearing on how well it'll, how yeah. it'll do at the box office. For sure. Uh, I think Pacific is a Pacific, Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim, yeah. yeah, is a great example of that. Not that it's a terrible quality movie. I think Twilight is a perfect example of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I did not mean to swear. I did not mean to swear. We do not speak of. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I know. I know. We're probably insulting a lot of nerddom's uh, favorite stuff. There, <laughs> no, 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 his no, own no, no, and whatever. But we, <laughs> Twilight is not a nerdum favorite thing. Twilight is a twelve-year-old <laughs> favorite thing. Well, uh, speaking uh, from bias, teens. there, son. Speaking from bias. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'm going to move us along before we uh, get letter bombs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a true smartwatch. This is also from you, Luke. Um, What's this about? So it seems that the current fad is that everyone wants to bring out their own like smart, smart watch of some kind and that it always integrates with your phone. And these guys said, screw it. We're just going to make a phone that does everything as well. Um, so it's a true smart watch. Can I use it like this? <laughs> I would, would not be, awesome. be surprised, no. but I don't think so. It's got a dialer and stuff. Get like in a it thumb implant. Like, I'd like just like to know. Um, 3G your go, go gadget phone. Yeah. Yeah. The picture in the, in the slideshow, the screen is nice and black. I it's hope it actually... <laughs> Yeah. Works, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you as you touch it, it's going to get all greasy and. So it's exactly great. what you would expect out of the uh, out of a smartwatch, but it just does a, a few yeah, more but it, things. Instead like, of having to link to a smartphone, yes, it is a smartphone. Yeah, effectively that you wear uh, on your wrist. Okay, okay. The, like We're, practicality. I'm not sold on these things. I'm not a watch <coughs> wearer anyway. Exactly. So. I stopped watch, wearing a watch yeah. because of a cell phone. So yeah. now I don't want to really have to come full circle. But on some forums that I was reading about this thing, people were already speculating that the battery might cause you injury. Because if oh, the yeah? screen is oh, on wow. and you're using the GPS mm-hmm. and all these mm-hmm. other cool things, it's, it's quite a concentrated spot on your arm. And also, I mean, have you picked up your phone after exactly. you've been using the modem for a bit or whatever? Or even so just it's making a call, it's quite really warm. Yeah, that's so true. So I wonder how that'll I'm, work I'm wondering yeah. if they're going to be able to compensate for that kind of problem. Probably if, not. If, if it's it gonna exists suck. even. But yes, I wouldn't want to wear that I'm predicting that right suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I reviewed a smartwatch once. The Yeah, was sucked. That's only... All right. Well, line on that. <laughs> yeah, so, well, the bar is low. 
So you can get <laughs> yeah. like a, a, yeah. a, a just a just a sort of competent thing in, and it'll be it's, great. I, don't, I just don't see the point of it, though. It's like, why do you have a watch? You have a watch to tell time. Like, why do you want to shove everything else in there? It just. To me, it just doesn't make but sense. But now you can do the inverse because now you can have all the fancy stuff on your watch and then just have a plain vanilla like Nokia 3210. And then you, you walk phone. around the corner sloppily. I and mean, you can beat people with that phone. <laughs> <laughs> no Self, jokes. The, self-defense and when it gets stolen, it's no biggie. The, the watch that I reviewed was actually, oh, no, it's good for fitness and can track all these things. Of course it's good for fitness. The thing weighed like half a ton. <laughs> so you know, you really I, wanna... I think a footnote here is that Galaxy Gear is meant to be revealed very soon. Oh, yes, Which is Samsung's uh, smartwatch. Uh, 4th of September, apparently. Mm. What, what I've read. The rumor. The rumored. Yeah. Apparently it was confirmed in the Korean and so Times. They don't actually specify the weight, so I wonder how heavy it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's be. But you, can, you can use it as a fitness tool while you're at it. Uh, I'm just trying to be positive, guys. Anyway, I'm going to move us swiftly along. Um, and a new element has been discovered at Lund University in Sweden. Is it the element of surprise? <laughs> no, we had that all along. Yes. This okay, is an, a, a new heavy element with the atomic number 115. It has yet to be named. It's not on the periodic table. Oh, so um, stop looking. So why are we looking at it? <laughs> <laughs> because that's been named. Come on. it's pretty colored. The XCOM games named it back in like the 1995s. No, it's Illyrium. Oh, it's Illyrium. That's Illyrium. what they called it. Illyrium. Element 115. Yes. That's so cool. They should stick with it. They should <laughs> yes. just go with it. Yeah, mm. yeah absolutely. I would, I would totally stick with that. All right. Okay. Then, this one also so from what does it do? But wait, yeah, hang on. Is it metal, <laughs> a gas? How does it work? What's the story? Um, well, they, the thing is, it's, it's like one of those elements at the bottom that's, uh, as There's far as I know, completely synthesized. Ah. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the thing about discovering an element, is that you don't really know what it does yeah. until you do some experiments. So we're not going to Pandora anytime soon? Uh, I don't think so. Damn it. There, yes. go, our, there go our avatar dreams. Yes, so um, I, I expect it's going to, it, just from the article, it looks like it's going to be um, radioactive, um, but yeah, we'll... <laughs> yes! More radioactive <laughs> the material. the best kind of there element. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm going to move us well, along. Give us what is this travesty that we have no. like? No, no superpowers. No superpowers. Okay, radioactive. Probably death. Super, probably death. Probably death. That's a cool superpower, I suppose. <laughs> Luke, this one also from you. Cookie-less cookies. We just so, like the picture for this, really. Cookie, nom nom. Okay, but uh, it has to. It has more sinister application. Uh, basically, uh, <laughs> you so you think you're cookies? safe by not turning on JavaScript and denying cookies? Well, the uh, buggers can still track you. Okay. So using methodology cool. that exists in uh, good old-fashioned HTTP. Uh, Is this something they can do on IE6? It, you can do it on anything. Sweet. Um, so what they do is the basics is something like uh, they hand you a picture and they give it a unique tag. And with that unique tag, uh, your browser is likely to make a request to say, oh, I have this picture already here. It has this hash. And that's how they can track you, by using those hash values. Hmm. Um, it's very boring, I suppose. But <laughs> <laughs> well, for, um, for, for those in the... But if you're in the privi- yes, if you're in the privacy brigade, it's a bad thing. Yeah, that is that is pretty concerning, especially considering the EU has just put in all this yes. effort for do not track. And this completely subverts that because it's not a cookie. It's not traditional um, uh, um, tracking because you don't really store anything in your site other than the, the image that uh, has the funky tagging on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are plugins you can get for reasonable browsers uh, already that allow you to uh, swap out the, um, the e-tag or whatever you want to do. But e-tag? What? That's what they I'll call bring it. bring those up. <laughs> um, <laughs> they call it an e-tag. They call it an e-tag. That, another reason it must be opposed. <laughs> of course. Um, what does it say now? Um, <laughs> Sorry, Luke. <laughs> there is Please, one of the easiest ways to actually get rid of it is, is by virtue of just remove that image. Right. So Stay delete your the cache. Internet. Delete yeah. your cache Don't when you finish browsing if it really fine. concerns you, and they can't track you across sessions, but they can still track you within sessions. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's also interesting. That means that you can have cookies turned off and still have session management. Correct. No, well, that's not so bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. Um, that or bring- to just private browsing, I guess. Yeah. Just, just turn that stuff off. Yeah, exactly. Um, that brings us to the end of the official Quick Geek segment. And now I'm going to call on James... 
um, who writes for mygaming.co.za, is the editor of mygaming.co.za, in fact. And we're going to talk some games mm. uh, because you had a journalist who went to Gamescom. Yeah. Uh, good old Jeremy was in Gamescom for us. Yeah, so it's, mm. it sounds like some interesting stuff happened. So uh, perhaps let's talk about what's um, what what came out of Gamescom that's going to have any bearing on us here in South uh, Africa. Well, obviously the PlayStation 4 got a release date for South Woo-hoo! Africa and a price. Um, so the uh, Stokinical Entertainment, they bring in the uh, Sony products and they said they're going to try and get the PlayStation 4 here by the 6th of December. Uh, for a recommended retail price of six two nine nine six thousand three hundred rand, and uh, yeah, so that was good news because um, Sony didn't officially list us as one of the launch countries. So uh, you know, we're we're just hypothesizing that um, Sterkinikor is uh, sort of getting in through some of their European contacts, and we're getting in some stock <laughs> for December. So. Uh, there was a bit of a frenzy of uh, you know retail activity, and guys have been putting up pricing. Uh, you know these things are already on pre-order, but now they have a price to sort of aim for. So I think a few guys have already got up their, yeah. their pre-order um, pricing. We've seen prices of between like five and a half grand yeah, and six thousand um, three hundred. Yeah, a few guys. Um, That's quite a disparity. A few guys are importing their own, and I, I don't know really how they can come in at, under that price. I guess maybe just to build a client base and use it as a way to sort of get their, get their name out their there. name out there by offering a cheaper PS4, which is probably fine by. <laughs> Afrios is doing on mobile. So. Yeah. And um, so what was it now? About five five thousand five hundred yeah, from Phoenix Tech. Phoenix eh? Tech. Yeah. yeah. And that included that was just the that's console. that's vanilla. And, then, and they yeah. had versions with a, a few extra controllers and you can get the PlayStation I bundled and then a game bundled and so on. Uh, so five thousand five hundred doesn't look bad at yeah. this stage. Um, you know, all the caveats are there. Oh, we might not be able to get the you know, these are not this isn't finalized and final numbers aren't in and oh the price may change and all that. So everyone's doesn't want to really commit one hundred percent, but uh with still a clinical backing it saying six two nine nine, six December, that's that's cool. Like that gets us really excited. Uh because obviously the other side of this conversation is what's happening with Xbox One. Yeah, and but before we get there, I want okay. to interject just briefly. Um while we're on Sturkinico, they also announced today that they're bringing IMAX back. Mm. So it's been a pretty good year for Sturkinico, I think. That's true, actually. Um bringing have being responsible for Sony, PlayStation, mm. and um uh you know, and on the movie side, I think digitizing their cinemas and yeah, yeah, the bringing IMAX back a lot. caused mm. a massive buzz online today. Um, the fact that they that they're going to bring IMAX back, no details yet though. Yeah. They they're pretty. They say that they're going to bring it back with Thor two, mm. and um, that they are. Uh, going to launch it in the Gateway Cinemaplex mm. in Durban. Mm. It, mm. They, they haven't given a date It would be interesting though. to get the tech specs from them. Um, maybe you can just, I don't know how general IMAX is, but obviously the appealing thing is the high res. Yeah. That it's not so much the giant screen, which comes as part of the package, but it's the, the very high resolution image that you also <laughs> get to see, which is uh, going to be really cool. And the audio. Sounds like fun. Yeah, the audio well, is also good. The audio. Yeah, they cool. spend a little bit more money on the IMAX audio than the okay, rest. like better speakers, than yeah, IMAX. more okay. subs and that sort All of right. stuff. But yeah. listen, can we just come back? You, you're saying the price, retail price projected for the, the PS4. PS4, PS4 yeah. how does it compare to international? What, what is the console pricing now? All right, uh, what, well, what are you paying oh, wow, for consoles? Geez, yeah. um, what, well, what are you paying uh, for? The PS3 will cost you three triple nine, a bit less than that now. Well, I think. look, if you look around for specials and whatever, you can expect to pick one up for anywhere between three thousand and four thousand rand for the. So don't you think that seven grand is a bit the, excessive? But wasn't that no, how no, much I don't like think a so. PS3 yeah, was? Consoles, consoles are always, new. always like when they first launched, it always got at the premium yeah. price. I mean, the thing when the PS3 launched. I mean, they had those big. It was like seven. It was, like grand. Grand. It was about seven grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah seven, seven okay. and a half. Grand. Yeah, I remember there was quite a backlash because that was ludicrously yes. expensive compared to what it yeah. was overseas. Well, interestingly enough, this is now the price point that Xbox One is being aimed at, um, in terms of US dollar in US dollar terms. Yeah, so yeah, it's like hundred dollars more expensive. Five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So that, that that that's quite costly. But I mean, if you're going to be comparing the US dollar price, no, I'm not saying. No, I'm saying South African market so. now. Yeah. yeah. What what are the consoles now costing? Like, if you're saying that the launch price is about seven grand, there was there was a special just the other day, three thousand three hundred for a PS three five hundred gig. Yeah. With a and like the Xbox, the Xbox is even cheaper. Yeah. And um, because I mean, it's got. Got older technology in it than the even the, the PS3. I, I mean, PS3 yeah, like yeah, has a blue. I, I don't. Player. I don't yeah. think it's altogether too outrageous a price yeah. for a PS4. Six thousand two hundred at launch. I mean, it's not cheap, but then again, this is like a high-end piece of gaming kit. But so could you buy a high-end end. gaming PC? You for, could for if you want to. If you want to go into the PC ecosystem, you, you'd be spending a bit more if you want a, a cool PC. I think. 
but uh, you, you could make it work. Well, but, remember that you with know, the console, people... you exclude the monitor. So that's, yeah. that's cost that you save sure. um, if you exclude that pricing yeah. um, from the PC as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, like if you want to, if you want like a solid graphics card, that's that's you yeah, I mean, drop uh, three uh, grand on that on its yeah, own. Yeah, two to three, depending. So you know, it's not. I don't think it's terrible for a okay. PS4. Um, guys are gonna you know lynch me. Oh, far too expensive. We're being ripped off. It but seems no, like you've terrible. already been lynched yeah. in yep. the RC. Yeah, I, I, I don't even want to look. look. That's so. why I'm asking the question. You, you're already taking some. I think that's here. bad. Just wait until the Xbox 360 and um, Xbox oh, One pricing. What is the Xbox One? We don't know yet. Not so what? We've got a picture and that's it. Uh, yeah, in it's South Africa, the, we don't have details. I mean, to, and and actually around the world, there's very few details on what's happening. They reduced their launch countries to 13 countries from 21, and that annoyed a lot of people um, because they they had to localize the Connect, which is bundled with the thing. Um, we so we don't even know those countries don't even know when they're getting their Xbox yet. And uh, South Africa hasn't even been mentioned. So who knows when we're going to see this thing? Only sometime in 2014. And nobody knows what it's going to cost. And we don't know what it's going to cost here yet. Guys are speculating. Uh, but if it's $100 more than a PS4, then what do we say? A thousand rand more than one a and PS4? A half. I'd go Easy. one five. One and a half one more. One five higher. Depends on how much. Well, like isn't the big question. It. I don't know. That could be quite it, a you know, punch to the gut. I mean, you're going to release mm. afterwards and Ooh. at a higher price. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft's, Microsoft's already yeah. taken quite a few They've taken a yeah, beating yeah. with, in terms of just public Over relations. And above, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and even with Gamescom now, uh, you know, Sony came out and said, cool, it's launching on this date and it'll be available in these countries. Uh, you know, obviously, we already knew the price and here's all our yeah. games and stuff. And Microsoft's still beating around the bush. We just don't know when this thing's going to launch. But the closest we know is sometime in November. I mean, what's the chances that this, this thing will have Metro? Metro? Oh, Metro. Metro you, interface. Yeah, it, it sort of has a, a, a Metro-looking UI. They're, they're, they're converging the, all the, the experience or whatever they want to call it to look similar across all their yeah, platforms. Yeah, but they've got the, the, the Xbox One. Um, part of what we said last time we covered this is it's actually running two operating systems, right? Um, uh, yeah, essentially. I so mean, it's running a, like one with a Windows kernel. Yeah, um, for the UI and what have you. Yeah, and, and then it's got like a dedicated a gaming. One, yeah. gaming I, I don't know. I think they share – sorry. I think they share a kernel. Um, but it's the, there's like um, there's certain well, differences. Well, there's like a I think there's like a, the gaming engine if you want to yes. call it that. So you can play your game and then pause it and bring up the UI it and do something else. Kind of sounds like they've made it sandboxed. So it's probably because they're tired of people like hacking the console through the save games and things like that. So <laughs> I would bet that that's what it is. Okay, interesting. Knows, yeah. yeah. But we wait. Oh, hello. Yeah. Mm. Where's my screen gone? There you go. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and, uh, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much time on it because um, there's just too much. But out of Gamescom, w what was most well, interesting to you? I'll guys? say uh, <clears throat> perhaps the gist of what we saw is again Microsoft had a fairly poor showing. Uh, some of the things they did announce was. Um, greater freedom for indie developers to self-publish and stuff like that. Yeah, I saw that got people um, stoked. That, that was about it. They, they announced some international pre-orders. doesn't really apply to us. Pre-order incentives. Uh, so Listen PlayStation, on, on the other hand, uh, obviously the PS Vita is going to be um, not a core element to the PS4, but it's going to be part of the experience if you have one. And they obviously want to push this thing because they've developed it and so on. That PS Vita itself is about as powerful as a PS3. So you can do the um, uh, the, the wireless play thing. So if you need to vacate the lounge, you can carry on playing your game on, in the bedroom on the PS Vita, at streaming it from the PS4 in the lounge over Wi-Fi. So they've announced some cool games. Uh, Borderlands 2 is a good one for PS Vita. That's been one of the problems of the thing, not enough cool games. And uh, there's a few indie titles coming to it to sort of bolster the, the PS Vita's appeal. Um, and then on the PS4 game side of things, we already knew about uh, most of the big exclusives. Uh, they did announce uh, a big indie push on PS4 as well. So they, you know, indies are the, the new darlings of the industry again uh, with the new consoles. Microsoft had their thing. So we're going to see Minecraft and Fez, funnily enough, finally on, on PlayStation. Okay. Um, which Who's working like on Fez since the guy just quit everything? He, yeah, I don't know. Goodness knows. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe he's written it already. Maybe, he's re maybe it was already done. like eight guys involved on that game, so maybe yeah. one of the remaining seven can do something. No, let, let's not give... What's the you name? Know, and, uh, yeah, it's, I, yeah. I, I don't want to seem biased, but I'm leaning towards PS4 in just terms of launch offerings. They just have some cool games on there. And these games will be multi-platform, but they also have some very cool exclusives. Um, 
So yeah, uh, then of course all the other guys are at uh, Gamescom, <laughs> EA, Ubisoft, and all, Activision, and all that lot. Um, from the Ubisoft side of things, I'd say um, you know, Watch Dogs looked most interesting. Watch to me. Dogs is cool. We've seen a lot about that. Um, Jeremy actually got to look at South Park: The Stick of Truth, oh, and he said can't wait it looks that. great because that 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 was a bit up in the air after the whole THQ went bankrupt thing, and then the, the IP got sold, and Ubisoft bought it up, and um, they're apparently carrying through the vision quite well. It looks just like the show, obviously written by Trey and Matt as well, and okay, voiced okay, and everything. Nice. And he says it's looking really cool, so I uh, can't wait to see how that turns out. Uh, and then the usual Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs and uh, The Crew, their new racing game, looks very interesting. I think it's going to give Need for Speed a run for its money, um, which is... Yeah, that, that'll take about some doing. Yeah. time, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, Need for Speed looks cool, has cool ideas as well. So it's uh, Need for... What's it called now? The new Need for Speed? Uh, Rivals. Rivals, that's the one. So they're doing some cool stuff with... Um, Don't need, ask me questions. With, fly, with dynamic you know, multiplayer where you'll be driving along and then suddenly another guy enters into your game world and he's being chased by the cops and you're... A wild Lamborghini appears. Yes, a wild Lamborghini appears. <laughs> and, and, and Throw a Pokeball and, and at you it. And you can engage with his chase and either throw him off or throw the cops off or follow them and see what happens or you're whatever. Or just a single player game. Who wants other people to interfere well, with and, your and single you player play it offline if you okay, wish. Fine. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Yahtzee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, well, Whooper Snapper is on my lord. lord. Get out of my PlayStation. <laughs> and um, I was Titanfall from EA. This is a Respawn. Uh, guys from Infinity Ward or one of them now and it's a whole long story but anyway uh, this is from the ashes of the original Infinity Ward and uh, they're doing sort of Call of Duty with mechs now and, and wall running and jetpacks. Sounds and, awesome. And it sounds like tribes with better graphics. Yeah, yeah. and they, they had a very cool uh, clearly scripted but very cool gameplay <laughs> trailer yeah. And uh, it looks amazing. I mean, guys are hopping in and out of these giant battle mechs and you know running up and down walls and doing all sorts of cool things. So it looks like a lot of fun. And you know, they've got a lot of cool. One games thing that concerned me: this mm. is going to be free to play. Titanfall. Fall. No, no. Okay, no. I'm thinking of something else then. Yeah, uh, there uh, was they got some Command catch. And Conquer free to play. Okay. Yeah, uh, which is you know that's running on Frostbite, so that looks interesting. I don't know how they're monetizing that yet. They haven't really uh, revealed that. Maybe oh yes, they actually microtransactions. They're, they're selling, uh, they're selling story <laughs> campaigns and stuff like that, and co-op campaigns. You and need oh, more resources. Okay. Pay two dollars so for more resources. <laughs> yeah, they'll develop a, they'll develop a co-op campaign that you can play with your buddy and whatever it costs. Uh, so uh, and they also announced the Sims Four, which is really really cool. Well, they're going <laughs> yeah. On that Come note, now. Yeah. no, no, you can't move along. Why? Well, well, why? Why you on WhatsApp? Who did you send to the event? Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy, our journalist. Did yeah. Jeremy actually spend some time and looked at the cosplay? Uh, he did, but uh, you know he was working, so he was actually in. Uh, because if you look at his photos, he hands-on missed... presentations and so on. Uh, okay. Hands-on, hands-on presentations. <laughs> Can't okay. take you guys anywhere. <laughs> I, th- I thought back to the games for a moment. I thought uh, <laughs> I thought Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare is pretty cool it, it looks like a battlefield um free-to-play sort of clone Sorry, say again what's again it's plants vs zombies garden warfare and it, it it's garden it's warfare. quite an interesting concept the, the plants are obviously stationary and you'll i think you set up your defenses <laughs> with the plants and then the zombies attack uh, yes. and there's various classes of zombies various soldier types and um, there's also a commander mode uh, kind of like battlefield so the commander can issue commands, funnily enough, from a top-down view to tell the zombies to attack here or go around this way and also gather intel on what the plants are up to. So multiplayer plants versus zombies? Uh, yeah, like first-person shooter type thing. And it looks like a lot of fun. And <laughs> uh, you mean there you go. <laughs> Wait, what? No, shooter. A shooter? It's like you, a can battlefield you take control of, of the zombie? zombie? Yeah. Yes! I was very skeptical about this game because it's free-to-play and the microtransactions mm. looked like it was going to end up being very expensive, but I would... I yeah, I mean, it's definitely that. going to be worth See, trying. And, they've and got they, you. They've got you. And it's but trapped. like anything with zombies, The man. in-game engine looks really good. It's Go like check out Dungeon the trailer. Siege with zombies. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, uh, what else? What else? I think what else? that's what gameplay in the middle, though. What, that middle, mm. that one there? It, it does have that very, like, cartoony 3D model sort of thing going on. So I can't really tell cell, from cell the shading, but yeah. go, go find the uh, gameplay trailer. It was all done in-engine, and obviously, and it, it looks amazing. I mean, the stuff they can pull off, and th- this is what's cool about next-gen. We're really seeing 
um, the future of gaming for the next five years. Gosh, coming, I freaking well hope so. Because <laughs> how long has it been since we had a new console? I mean, yeah, it's amazing what they years. squeezed out of them, but you know, this is taking it to a whole new level. So <laughs> stuff like Plants vs. Zombies is a lot of fun, but it's really ignoring the, the Wii U. Yes, what do you have what, 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 Everyone learned. No, we don't even, so what, we everyone learned. They say, no, we don't put a tablet inside the controller. Stupid nerds. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's what, don't, don't diss my Wii U. A, B. <laughs> uh, did you buy one of those? <laughs> Yeah, it was a mistake. But <laughs> that said, um, people also dissed the Wii, and it ended up being the best console, of the, best selling console of that generation. Depressingly, um, depressingly, <laughs> they were like, "Yeah, we like fun games." I mean, what's so wrong about that? <laughs> oh, no. and, and yeah, I, I guess I mean it just speaks to the fact that the that the that the gamer the gaming market is becoming more mainstream. People just want, you know, like fun stuff to play that's not like. Immense amounts of gore, shooting people in the face, mm, mm. tactical, mind bending, <laughs> um, or tactical or mind bending, or like deep stories or anything like that. Yeah, they yeah. just want to jump fit. in and go, yeah, yeah. or kart racing or yeah, whatever. We've we've had a uh, a request from the the IRC room. Uh, I demand a discussion on Ben Affleck being the new Batman. That's a good. All right, also, I'd like so, to hear uh, how Batman. Did I'd you like watch know, Daredevil? Hang on a minute. I'd like to know from <laughs> the IRC be how point. they've been afflicted by oh, this oh, announcement. No. Oh. Thanks, James. You officially and, killed that okay, one. And, 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 to, and to acquiesce to their requests, uh, we'll start with me doing a Batman voice to set you all at ease. Uh, <coughs> wait, wait for it. Wait, wait, wait. Just going to change the cameras. <laughs> uh, put that one on eight. Okay, let's try that now. Go for it. I'm Batman. James? I am the Batman. Quentin. <laughs> Johan. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> oh, come on. I am the Batman. Who wins? Excellent. <laughs> All right, Irish, you yes. decide who wins. There you go. I, I don't think we need to talk about Ben Affleck being the Batman just yet. Val uh, Kilmer is behind the idea. Uh, you mean... <laughs> And who is he again? <laughs> Val Kilmer was well. He was the Batman he, before the he series was completely a tanked. Batman, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the series completely tanked. Not that it was any good then. Yeah, um, but wasn't he also the Saint? He yes. was. God, I'm so confused now. <laughs> <laughs> All these actors. They should just play one character. Yep. All right. With that, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop our little informal segment mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and move us into events. So a lot of stuff coming up, uh, especially this coming weekend. Hopefully, I can have this video up before then, so that you can all find out about this before it actually happens. But on the 31st of August, that's Saturday, um, we have Geek Fest, and Geek Fest, uh, the dark, there's the Dark Carnival Geek Fest, and then there's also uh, a Geek Fest in Bedford View. Um, so uh, tickets are available through Web Tickets, and I'm sure if you go search for Geek Geek Fest South Africa, you can uh, come across. Um, everybody who's running a geek fest and and all, there's also show notes uh, it'll be in the show notes in this show and it'll be in the previous show show, show notes then also on saturday the 31st is um software freedom day um it's been moved oh, up cool. from the original date which is was somewhere in september um because they managed to book richard stallman uh, he is the founder of the free software foundation and a lead programmer on the gnu project and um, if you've uh, never heard Richard Stallman uh, speak before and you are into uh, free software and don't let him know that I said this but open source, then um, <laughs> it, could be, it could be worth going to listen to him. Um, it's, it's, it brings an interesting perspective to the whole debate of free versus open versus proprietary um, and, uh, and uh, also uh, along with – uh, Corey Doctorow, who's coming to iWeek this year. We're getting a whole bunch of uh, these, hmm. these activists coming to South Africa this year. Um, also has an interesting perspective on internet privacy uh, and so on. So uh, check that out. Tickets are, to that are also available for free. So where is this going to be? Um, SFDZA is at Wits University. Okay, so if you're English player, there's a lot of portals. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> thanks for that. The keynote is by Richard Stallman, and I should not gloss over the fact that there are going to be many other speakers at Software Freedom Day South Africa. Last year, we did not have a famous keynote speaker, to the best of my knowledge, except me. Huh? Um, <laughs> and, oh, and, oh, oh, hold on, you can have a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> there is no spoon. I, I, and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't actually speak at last year's Software Freedom Day. <laughs> so you were just I don't think you were even oh, asked. Wow. <laughs> it's because I'm no one, that's why. Um, but the um, but the fact is is that these guys talk about really really awesome stuff. If you're a geek, you will not be bored. It's after Freedom Day. 
I'm willing to wager. Um, then Richard Stallman's also going to be touring the rest of South Africa. Tomorrow, the 29th of August, he's in Bloom at the University of the Free State. Mm-hmm. At the th- on the 3rd of September, he's at CETA in Erasmus Curfew in Pretoria. On the 5th of September, he's in Cape Town at UCT. And on the 6th of September, he's in Durban at the University of Kuzulu Natal. Hey, busy man. Yeah. Um, while we had him, uh, the, the SFD guys, it's actually pretty cool of them. They're like, listen, we, we managed to book Richard Stallman. Um, any of the other user groups, um, Linux user groups out there, although he'll kill me if he heard me say that too, um, are you interested in hosting him? You know, so he doesn't just speak in Johannesburg, so that they cool. can, so that you can yeah. come and see the, the the rest of the folks as well. Um, all right, so then it's National Wills Week from the seventh to the eleventh of October. Um, get a will drafted for free by a lawyer. Huh. Uh, that'll be um, that, a link to that'll be in the show notes, and I will paste it into IRC for those of you who are curious about this. Um, it, it, yeah, it's actually surprisingly important to have a will if you have any kind of assets. I don't have, Otherwise, I don't have get... a will because uh, I don't have any kind of assets. <laughs> <laughs> Just delete my browsing history. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then iWeek from the 9th to the 12th of September. Corey Doctorow is speaking. Also, my broadband's very own RPM. On, oh, the, oh, on the same day cool. that Corey Doctorow is doing a keynote, Corey, do, uh, Corey is doing a panel discussion on the Tuesday and he's doing a keynote note on the Thursday and then RPM will be there on the Thursday as well. Tickets to that are also free. It's in the south of Johannesburg at a place called Taba Ibatswana. Taba Ibatswana. Thank you, Quinton. And uh, <laughs> so you can come and pull into that as well. And the My Broadband Conference is Yay. happening on the 9th of October, 2015. My birthday, just so everyone, everyone knows. Sweet. So, oh yeah, if shout out from the stage. Exactly. Quinton at uh, the My Broadband Conference. I don't no, know if you, no, are you no, holding no, down the fort? I'm going to be at the, the office. The I'll okay. be at the office making sure you Articles don't have errors in. <laughs> Good job. As always. <laughs> As always. <laughs> that damn extra. Yeah. Um, and uh, so tickets to that are also free. Mm. Lots of free stuff in South Africa. And you guys are so ungrateful. Um, <laughs> Generalizations galore on mm. today's Let's Talk Geek. Uh, then Rage is from the 4th to the 6th of October. Tickets to that go on sale on the 31st of August. Which uh, is a Saturday morning, 9 yeah, a.m. That, that's, that's the same day as Geek Fest Everything. and Richard Stallman. <laughs> um, that's for the Nagland. Mm. Those tickets sell out in seconds. Mm. Literally. <laughs> yeah, it's no joke. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want them, you better There's about 2,000 of them. So... There's Spam a fair early. chance. But yeah. yeah. Hey, well, for early, the first yeah. time, though, like all these events aren't all happening... Completely on the same weekend because Sexpo is actually happening the week before that on the 26th of September. You didn't put it in <laughs> no, the events. Not, like, clashing. Yes. Come on, guys. Now you can make it to Sexpo and you can make it to Rage. So you can and get H2O, right? I don't the know when it is. Fist pumping <laughs> action. Yeah, of course. If you're into like fist pumping, <laughs> like H2O is also happening sometime around there. Yeah. Um, that's it for our events calendar for now. For more events, check out stardates.co.za. If you th- have, if you think we've missed something, <laughs> or if we just have missed something and you're not just thinking it, and we just did miss something, uh, feel free to drop us a line, email, Twitter, uh, fax. Uh, no, don't send faxes. Fax. I don't even know how to like receive one. Morse faxes. code. Yeah, Morse code is probably better than fax. Carrier pigeon. Carrier pigeon. Smoke signals are probably we better than fax. can't promise to return the pigeons. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 dibs on the pigeon if you, if, if you send it through. Um, and just let us know, hey, listen, you noobs, you forgot my event. I want free coverage too. And uh, we'll be sure to bomb it into the calendar. Then into a segment of the show I like to call What Geekery Is This? And I'm going to start us off on the negative side of things. It's a story we um, covered and I think mentioned at the, at the end of last week's show. We didn't I actually cover it in the it, show. Yes. Um, but at the, in the post-show show, uh, we mentioned it. Is the city of Johannesburg statements... Uh, invoices for various things that's water, electricity, rates and taxes, whatever, being available for public consumption from their, from a domain owned by them. Mm. Importantly, it was being crawled by like Google as well. Yeah. So it's public. Yeah. There was no robots blocking no. Uh, indexing on that, and uh, uh, or, or at least part uh, parts of it were open. What was interesting is that um, from some, hey? yeah, yeah, from the feedback I've received, this has been open <coughs> um, for at least a year now. And uh, that's, from f- that's from hackers who, who have actually seen this system be open for a year now. And when you well, search that... Probably not domain, hackers. It's just general browsers. 
No, no, this was a ha- I spoke to a hacker. Um, so, so um, who, who knew? But like, you didn't need any sort of hacking skill to get into this. There was no social engineering involved. There was no cracking involved. There was no um, any sort of security expertise needed to get access to these invoices. Yeah, I mean, it was the most basic thing. Increment the invoice number by one, and in the URL bar, yeah, hit enter. There you go. Hey, Presto, you have a new invoice. Yeah, I'm a elite hacker. And now we were and hypothesizing that it, the ones that were indexed were ones that were viewed. Something like that. I, I don't mean, know. I don't, some were available. It, it, that's, that's not how robots.txt works. Okay. Um, but what, yeah, it was just odd that, yeah, that like there so. were only three pages of results, but there were like hundreds of thousands of invoices mm-hmm. available mm-hmm. online. Um, anyway, and uh, so what's happened in uh, like after this is the uh, person, the whistleblower, the the person who tried to let the city of Johannesburg know that there was a vulnerability and failed uh, because he couldn't get through to anybody who wanted to hear him at the uh, call center, eventually went public with it. Uh, we then did an article, and now they've laid a criminal case at the police. Hey, it's my image. At, for, at the uh, Hillbar Police Station. Yes. At the well-known cybercrime yes. unit Yeah, uh, at the Hillbar Police Station. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and for <laughs> hacking... Uh, yeah. I'm using air quotes because, because incrementing a number in your I, elbow. I mean, really, it looks like hacking. the city of Johannesburg is trying to very poorly cover their ass. And now, and what's interesting is um, Ikuruleni yeah. had exact, exactly the same problem, and um, and what they did was they fixed it uh, when they learned about it, and and they said thanks, and they said thanks. Yeah. Uh, and and I think they even which is like the nice thing like to gave do. an incentive. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, now what's interesting in this particular case and what's been mentioned over and over again is a case involving a, a, a hacker calling himself Weave in the United States, and what he did was ex- it it I mean the case reads exactly the same. At during at the iPad launch they had exactly the same vulnerability. Um, they launched the iPad on AT and T, um, and you viewed your statement, and then you could literally just increment the number at the top. Uh, I don't remember exactly what kind of number it was, but it would then um, show you another show you voice. another person's account. Yeah. Um, and uh, this guy, what he did was, I think he he, he he iterated over a couple of them, compiled the information, sent it to Gorka Media. They ran the story, and we've got in trouble. Um, and what? it's actually interesting. He got he got charged with a crime. Tried. Everybody's like, "This is impossible because it, there is no hacking happening here." Yeah. And he got found guilty under the uh, American Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986. If you've watched Hackers, oh, wow. <laughs> and he he um, has 41 years, uh, 41 months in jail. That's that cool beard, man. Him. Yeah. Uh, you can't be a hacker without an epic beard. The, the, no, he, I'm doing my best. Andrew Allen Escher. Yeah. Yep. Ar- um Anyway, so so that's a pretty concerning precedent. Luckily, it's in the United States. I hope the South African uh, legal eagles don't get the same idea. Do we have the equivalent of the EFF here? Or no? Uh, <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> it's, it's called. Headed, uh, it's headed no. up by Julius Malema. Yeah, I don't think they <laughs> no, know not that one. They're not, <laughs> not quite as not quite as clued up on the internet as. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but but the actual Electronic yeah, yeah. Frontier Foundation. Them. No. no, the Electronic Frontier Foundation is an international organization. However. Okay, so. I don't know if one can enlist their help. Um, a lot of ha- a lot of help has been offered to our um, to our so-called hacker behind the scenes, though. So I think if it okay. ever goes to trial, well, I think it, it must just be said quickly that no charges have been laid against that guy yes. who so uh, exposed he, the problem. The yes. city of Johannesburg is just going, "Oh, we were hacked and criminal charges," and oh, it's yeah. very serious. Well, they've, they've laid they've made a case at mm. the cops, a criminal case, mm. but they've not named anyone. Mm. Okay, um, okay. So and this guy says he's not been contact- contacted by the police at all, and his name is available on the internet for everybody to to know. Mm. So I don't know if, if um, wh- one thing, a-, a theory we're kicking around the office is that maybe what the city of Johannesburg is going to assert is that there was no vulnerability until they were hacked, and then this vulnerability existed, and that's when this everyday man. Uh, discovered discovered yeah. the, the problem. That or they're chasing ghosts. We have an interesting comment here from the from our IRC. Mm. We yes. have the FXI, Freedom okay. Expression Institute. Institute. Yes, we do have the FXI, um, and they they cover up. a much broader base than the EFF. But yeah, I mean the, they they could, I mean they, they are a civil society that that. Could I mean have categories: access for information effective. program, annual. Rep- okay. Mm. Yeah. So they've got a much broader. They're not quite as focused as the EFF, but they they are the type of people who. Um, you know, 
who would be, have an interest in protecting whistleblowers, I think. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's sort of the, 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 the negative side of what's happening in the South African technology space. And then <clears throat> since we have Quinton and James – in the more, show I lean on Quinton more, <laughs> the board game discussion we're talking because. about board games again mm. yeah because I love board games we have to end the show on something awesome and that something awesome is going to be board games Quinton you've bombed a whole ton of board games into well, the show notes okay well luckily for me recently I uh, managed to play all three of the board games that I bombed in here okay um we will start. We'll start with the most awesome one, uh, which is Gloom. Now, Gloom is a, it's a card based game. Uh, Obviously not there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find <laughs> that, it. Give me a the, second. The whole the whole mm-hmm. concept surround, uh, surrounds um, you got you got four families. They've got uh, between four to six family members in it, and the whole point of the game is to kill them. It's uh, <laughs> it's very morbid. It's very depressing. You can only kill family members after like when they're in a in a state of depression, and throughout the whole game, you get different cards that like. Put, put them in depression like oh they were attacked by hornets so oh, minus 15s but the, the, the most fun <laughs> part about the game is uh, the stories that you have to create around it as you're playing it because your cards will say like oh you got scolded by the queen so you've got to create a story about what led up to that point and you, you keep you, you, you create this whole narrative around it and it's, it's hilarious you always got to play with people who, who like storytelling but um, yeah. the, the game is just so much fun like I mean, who doesn't doesn't take some some joy in, in Schadenfreude? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other game that I put down here was uh, is, is Dixit. Now, it's not as dirty as it sounds. Um, <laughs> nice. What Dixit means is uh, words, I think, or something. I can't remember. It's Latin for something. Uh, the whole premise of that is it's the opposite of Boulder Dash. Now, Boulder Dash is you get a very obscure word. Everybody in the group tries to define it in a very creative way. Put all the, the definitions together and you've got to vote on which one you think it is. Um, Dixit's the opposite. Uh, you get picture cards. Uh, with the picture cards, they're all very obscure, very abstract. Make the word. Yeah, and then you've you got to create a story or a word or a phrase I like that, that idea. best describes the card that you've got. And then everybody who's playing, uh, it's up to six players, uh, they have to choose one of their cards that best fits the word that you just described or the word that you just said. Put all the cards together, and you Very vote nice. to see which one it is. It's, it's so much fun. Uh, you can go as... as uh, is it also like an element, like in Boulder Dash, you try to convince people that yours is the right one, subtly? Um, not really. It's just, it's just the pictures and the, the, where the convincing comes is people need to see whether you're going to be very blunt about what's on the card. Like you could des- describe what, exactly what's on the card. Or you can go really, really abstract. But you have to at least get one person to get your card in order to score points. So you can't just be completely off. You need to think about it really. You know. And then there's expansion, ca- uh, expansion packs. It's a set of 84 cards. Expansion packs add another 84 cards. So like, literally, it just, it's amazing. It's probably one of my favorite games. Um, and then I've also got uh, King King of Tokyo over here, which is um, I've seen this. It's very cool. It's also like <laughs> basically you you got your your trope Japanese trope monster. monster. Yeah. Uh, also, there's like six. There's expansions. Everything. The monsters themselves don't really have much much to do. They're just cool designs. Uh, what happens is you you go and you got to store energy. Uh, it's a, basically a dice dice and card game. So you roll dice. You get energy. You can either attack. Um, you can heal points. Or you can uh, get uh, uh, victory points, you know, yeah, yeah. through the card rolls. Um, basically, once you enter Tokyo, and somebody else rolls hits, they attack you. You can choose to stay in to get more victory points, or you can decide to leave. Um, and basically, it just goes around, and you've got to strategize to kill everyone, or you you win by getting twenty victory points, or by killing all the other monsters. So depending on how you play, but uh, you can get the various cards and stuff to to help you. My name's like Quinson Van Royen, man. You're giving me the wrong strap, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's Quinson Bronkost. Um, so, yeah, those are, those are the three, three main games that I, uh, <laughs> I played last week. Any, any, any brought it up, but it's okay. She, or we, we tweeted the right stuff, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Quinson Van Royen's like going, what the hell about this dude? <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. Um, so, yeah, those are the three games that I, I played uh, quite recently. Um, they're all on my list of things to buy because they really are. They, they're just so much fun. This past weekend, uh, in addition to a quick game of Dungeons & Dragons, at which Luke was in attendance, yes. <laughs> um, we also played Princes of Florence. 
And um, that's it's a mixture of a uh, board and card game. Yeah. And <clears throat> your what you are trying to do is uh, you've got this. Uh, it, it seems to be like almost re- like in set in the Renaissance. Yeah, yeah. And what you're trying to do is do great, in- inspiring work works to get yourself like victory points at the end of the day. Um, and uh, these victory points uh, represent basically how awesome your your city state is or whatever. Uh, yeah. you represent and so <clears throat> what you do is you've got various professions um, that you draw on these th- that you can draw on these cards uh, you start with a hand of three uh, and it's like poets astronomers uh, dramatists physicists mathematicians like every profession yeah mm, you, you know like all the all, <laughs> all the all the professions of the renaissance that that sort of made the renaissance famous as this era of great progressive thinking yeah. Yeah. um and uh, th- what what you need to do is you you've got like this grid in front of you and then you play this tetris mini game with yourself where <laughs> you <clears throat> uh what <laughs> yes, it's it's worse than it sounds <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and uh what you've got to do is you've got uh, a, a couple of different things that these professions want in order to achieve their great works so for example um a dramatist wants a theater um, as does, I think, a poet. Yes. Um, and uh, the, the theater building has a certain shape. And, uh, oh, okay. and, and, and that, gives yeah. you, that gives you then four uh, work value um, when, you, when you have your dramatist create a work. Um, and you, then there's also other things that, that boost that work value. So your, they might want a, a, a certain uh, city structure, like a park, a lake, or a, a forest, forest yeah. are the things that you can have in your city to help boost your work value. And then there's also a, a freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of opinion, and freedom of travel Yes, are the three freedoms that you can purchase. And each of the professions wants one of these three things. And if you have the combination, then you get the maximum points out of that. And then you have to boost the points further by playing cards and, you know, uh, or like there's, there's all kinds of things that interact with yeah. it. You can have a, a jester or a joker um, and he boosts work value by two points and so on. So the, the idea is then to, to get the, the, the maximum work value that translates into money and uh, prince, principal points or power points yeah, yeah. or victory points is yeah. what it comes down to. Um, and, uh, and then the, the, he with the most points at the end of the game, and it plays over a finite amount of rounds. Seven rounds. Seven rounds, and the game's over. So um, it's also uh, the stop condition is very well defined. The game will only take you so long if you have people familiar with, with the game rules playing it. Um, immense fun, only five players maximum, though. Yeah, that's, that's the that's only th- thing. But I would well, argue that it's get two games going in different ways. I would argue <laughs> that it's more fun with five players because when we drop down to like three, the 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 mechanics change. Yes, yeah, or, yeah. So yeah. Th- that was actually the interesting problem. To the play problem I find with, with tabletops is as soon as you like try to explain it to someone, it just comes out sounding so complicated. The, you the have best to play them. you always like the yep. best way to learn how mm. to play these games is by actually playing them with people, and then after you, one you, round, yeah, you'll yeah have like it. you, you yeah. sort of get it because I mean. I mean, uh, Chaos in the Old World, which is like Warhammer-based, you know, that's... You try explaining to someone, I basically come down, oh, it's just like Risk, but a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Risk with, risk with, risk with magic. Snakes and ladders you know? with cards yeah, and it's, stuff. It's, it's like sort of the best way. You need to get people to play the games with you. And I think a lot of people are intimidated by it. They're like, oh, we're tabletops and these figures and it's like rules. Like, oh, they've got a 500-page book of the they rules. They should come play 4th edition D&D with me. <laughs> I've not had a more rules-heavy <laughs> game played uh, ever i cannot think of a more rules heavy game it's, <laughs> it's intense um, uh, okay. so yeah if you can handle that then you can pretty much handle whatever a board game can but uh, i recommend i recommend everybody go out and at least play some of these obscure tabletop games monopoly is old school guys Nobody plays them no longer obscure because <laughs> yeah. they're fun yeah, yeah they are yeah. they great fun and um you can get them in south africa or you can uh, from a play the digital sushi is what yeah. we digital usually sushi, use sushi, um, and you can uh, also what a lot of my friends have done uh, is that they are importing via Amazon. Yeah, um, and also so that they'll uh, Icon, which was recently now was in July. Um, it happens once a year, and Geek Fest will obviously have these kinds of things. And there's also a store in Cape Town that I know of. I can't think of their name at this, this point. In Wizards time. is where we usually well, board, board, board games. That's here to tell you. Is it board games? Board games. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the board games. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, d- uh, don't go for like the super obscure games. Um, 
but they, they do have some of them. They, they at least have Settlers of Catan, uh, yep. the Fancy Flight Games series, mm. that sort of thing. So they do have some very cool stuff. Uh, but if you want like the really, really obscure stuff that, that we talk about sometimes, then uh, yeah. you might have to look beyond uh, Board Games or Zero Or they can get it in for you. But yeah, They for might sure. just not have it listed right on their website. Um, and um, also, while we're, while we're on the topic um, and we're giving people free plugs, um, you can be sure that there will be board gaming at Rage. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes, uh, of course. When we were yeah. there last year with a camera, we got some really yeah. good shots. We neglect to mention there's all, there's all sorts of other like geek culture going on around Cosplay. There. Cosplay, of course, if uh, you want to yeah. ogle some strangely dressed picture of Leia. people. <laughs> and, um, no, just not Princess Leia. The trope yeah, is so gracious. bad. <laughs> um, what else, say? Hey? Uh, anime figurines and uh, all that Magic the Gathering yeah. Just anime in general. Like, they have an anime theatre set yeah. up sometimes. Anime works, are they? they They've got a theatre. Magic the Gathering Magic uh, the trading card played. game yeah. contest will probably be going on, as always. Yep. Um, what else? And all the CCG <clears throat> Yeah, there'll be a bunch of other well. CCGs. Um, yeah. Well, what's yeah, cool sure. is, is that they've Magic got a specific is the most recognizable, I think. Yeah, yeah. They've yeah. got a specific yeah. area, so you can <laughs> literally bring any of your games and just get a bunch of friends together and you can play there at Rage. Yeah. So that so they don't have like specific things. Well they do have specific things, but you can also bring your own stuff, which is also really cool. Yeah. yeah. I think, which is fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's mm. a great it's a great way to get to know other board gamers and take a look at what board games are available. Uh, why like why a, is uh, the IRC room talking about twerking? <laughs> it's a word what? now. Oh, yeah. No, it's why? being added no. to add it to the I, I don't want to on. We end the show on a positive note. We will not end it on twerking. <laughs> so I will edit on this. In addition to twerking, the Oxford English Dictionary also added derp. Derp. Okay. Derp. I, I that approve of derp. Yes. <laughs> Everyone do your derp face. And for fun, the, the, German, <laughs> the German dictionary added some naughty words from the English language, which I can't say on air. Oh, well, but we'll tell you all after the show. Mm. With that, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Quinton, let's start there in the middle because the I middle? said your name because first. Screw yeah. your rules. So I, can, I can clear clarify. My name isn't Quinton von Royen. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Blame the mixer, all right? It's Quinton Bronkhorst, and you can find me on Twitter at Cornea, Q-O-R-N-E-A. I know it's a bit weird, but... Cornea with a Q. Yeah, it's Cornea with a Q, which is basically the whole premise of the whole thing. Or you can find me on my broadband or business tech or my gaming. I'm across the board. Don't stalk me on Facebook, though, because that's a bit creepy. That is creepy. Facebook is, creepy. yeah. <laughs> James, where can people yes. find you? Uh, probably mygaming.co.za <laughs> is the best place to do this. Yeah? Uh, you don't want to do it when it's live, hey? Other way. Other way. There we go. <laughs> Yay! Uh, mygaming.co.za forums. Uh, that's um, just where confirm, we hang out James, is that strap line right? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Twitter handle down there, James underscore E underscore S. For those watching all And uh, yeah, come hang out with us on the forum. It's not just me, there's a lot of other fun people as well, so uh, yeah. Mm. And uh, you, I don't want to give too much away, but if you get like nice and active on my gaming, mm. there are secret rewards yes, that await you. Yes, not so you. secret games and other cool things often are being given away. <laughs> yes, if you want to come yeah. hang out, yeah. Cool, Luke. Where can people find you? Mm. Twitter. <laughs> find me at frk. Yeah, yeah. Wait, just yeah. gotta change it. That one. Is that one right? No, that's yeah. me. <laughs> that does not. Do me. the face. Though. That's that me. Yeah. There we go. Okay, I must do the face. <laughs> 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 Derp was just added to the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Johan, where can people find you? Um, well, tonight behind the mixing desk. Otherwise, triple w dot who dash else. That's it. That's it. Is everyone? <laughs> is everyone James? <laughs> I'm sorry. Everyone's James. I'll get these strap lights right. Okay, they're all back. All right. <laughs> a little yep. rusty, but not bad at all. Johan, for, your, there. for, for your for your first, first time, time behind the desk in a year, years, I think. Years, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm Jan from Yellen. You can wait, find wait, me. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Hey, Look at that. Got that one right the first at time. At Jan BZA, for those of you on the audio, why are we so happy? Um, uh, on, got the strap lines right. On Twitter, mybroadband.co.za, on the web, I write there and so spend most of my online time there. And in fact, I'm doing an article tonight that you should read uh, tomorrow morning. So go check us out. Uh, occasionally, you'll find my stuff on business tech and my gaming as well. Um, so yeah, that's where we hang out. You can also circle me on Google+. I think I'm the only one around this table. Who actually uses Google is Plus? Is active on it. Yeah, I wouldn't I even call myself it active every now and well, again. <laughs> I, I do use it, but yeah. yeah. And I post things to Facebook sometimes if you want to follow me there, but don't like friend me or anything. That's just 
That's just weird. Unless keep, you're my friend. Keep a profile me. open, then people can stalk you without adding you as a friend. Yeah, follow. And exactly. they can clone your, your accounts as well and then get all your friends to give their money. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I need money oh, for yeah. the bus home. Um, anyway, <laughs> with, with that, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you, you again next week. Bye.